Hi. Um. Please disregard my makeup. I was doing a thing. Um. So, let's begin. My name is Sophia. Sophia is actually my western name, but I've always liked it. It's spelled with a PH, so my teachers would always point out that it was Greek, meaning wisdom. Honestly, I've never felt very wise. This is my life so far. On Thursday, March 14, 2002, I was born in Thailand. At just two months old, my parents brought me to the States. Now, ever since I could remember, most of my immediate family from my father's side lived here too. They would eventually open our family business. More on that later. I have very few memories of my time spent as an only child. Everything changed when my parents had a son, and I became a big sister for the very first time. From that moment on, my baby brother and I were inseparable. He was my very best friend. He still is. This was around the same time that the family restaurant opened. The entire family worked there, including my parents. I remember them working very hard to provide for us. They had both had two, three jobs, and while they didn't always get a chance to be around, they never made me feel unloved. I remember my fifth birthday very distinctly. It read past midnight on the clock, I was sitting on the ground in front of a bedroom door as my father and brother slept soundly on the bed. It was no longer my birthday anymore, but I just couldn't go to bed. My mother walked through the door, exhausted after her long shift at the factory, and was extremely shocked to see me waiting there. She asked me, what are you still doing up? And I said, it's my birthday, mommy. To which she replied, I know. She sat me down in the living room and surprised me with this big bag of toys. Even then, I understood my family loved me, which is why they had to work so hard. And so, I took it upon myself to be the best daughter I could. I grew to be very independent never asking for help with my homework, never getting in trouble, never causing problems. I tried my hardest to be a good kid for my parents so they wouldn't have to worry. Once my two younger cousins were added to the mix, it was always take care of your siblings, help them, set a good example, be a good role model. So that's what I did, especially when it came to my brother. I took care of him like I was supposed to, and from my point of view, I raised him. My mom likes to say that I'm his second mother. I didn't really get to be a child. By the time I was in junior high, I felt so pressured that I had developed depression. Trying to be perfect became difficult. My grades started dropping, and then came the anxiety making things that much worse. My only distractions was the time spent with my friends. In 8th grade, I discovered a mental health support network. Um, people would post about their struggles and others would su provide support and companionship. It didn't necessarily help, but at least I felt heard. Um, I sort of made a friend on the app. Unfortunately, this person was extremely suicidal, and they would constantly need me to talk them off the ledge. I saw pictures of their self-harm, and of them in the hospital. I felt so trapped, because I wanted to help them so badly, but I was struggling myself, and I was just a kid. I didn't know what to do. I don't even remember how it ended if I stopped talking to them, or if they stopped responding to me. Thinking about it now, the fear of burdening someone else with my problems is the reason why I don't really open up. It also doesn't help that my parents are a bit old school when it comes to mental health. 
they still believe it's just a mindset and that I can just turn it off. I wish. Anyway, high school was just as bad. I started to associate my depression with school and the place I once loved became the place I most dreaded. Things got slightly better for a moment when I joined drama club. I was in tech. For a time, I had a community, friends, and a different purpose. But eventually, people started to graduate, and our tech group grew smaller and underappreciated. I came to resent tech, but with my role, I felt obligated to stay. This was also where I met the boy of all my firsts. My first love, I suppose, but truthfully, I no longer believe it was love. We'll call him Dallas. He was a year older than me, cute, tall, fluffy hair. We were just friends until one day we were something more. Not quite a couple yet, but he and I became intimate. We were just messing around, but we made a rule there would be no penetration. We would not have sex. We made it very clear that it was a line we would not cross. Then, on the day before my 16th birthday, he crossed the line. Alone. It was over before I could even process what happened. Honestly, I wasn't sure what had. I didn't know what to think, but then he said he was sorry. And I realized. It's hard to admit, even now. Back then, I denied it. Um, pretending what happened didn't happen the way it did. I became obsessed with us being an item. That way it wouldn't have been for nothing. That way it will have meant something. I begged constantly for him to stay with me. I became his keeper. I got him a job at my family's restaurants. And when they closed, I got him a job at the pharmacy I worked at. I cooked for him, I cleaned for him, I dressed how he wanted me to dress so men wouldn't stare and I wouldn't get raped. Too late for that. I even drove him everywhere when he didn't listen to me and got his driving privileges revoked for months. All the while, he would break up with me every now and then just to come back and use me again. For almost three years, this was my life. I couldn't have imagined what came next. 2020 was a tough year for everyone. I was supposed to go on this student tour of Spain the week of my 18th birthday. Um, that same week, just days before I was going to go, COVID happened. I was devastated, absolutely destroyed. I had slaved all year to pay for the trip on my own and then poof, it was gone. School was canceled for two weeks and then another and another until my entire senior year was gone. I didn't get my senior prom. I didn't get a proper graduation. I didn't even get to say goodbye to my friends. I didn't get any closure and suddenly was thrown into adulthood, college. I had always known I wanted to travel abroad, um, so studying abroad seemed like the best fit for me. I was so excited. I researched schools in London. I found this great program. I filled out the application and everything, and all I needed now was the essay. When I told Dallas my plan, he was understandably upset, but then he suggested he go with me. I argued with him, of course, explaining that he shouldn't just follow me without a plan. He'd have no job, no school, no friends, and I didn't want him to come to resent me for it. He was angry. Um, he accused me of wanting to leave him. We didn't talk about it much more. Later that night, we were intimate, and Dallas purposely tried to get me pregnant. 
I was so distraught afterward. I confronted him and all he could say was that he did it for us. He thought if I were to get pregnant, I wouldn't go to London, or if I did, he'd at least have the baby. I didn't know what to say. I couldn't believe it. In the moment, he risked ruining my life, and had I gotten pregnant, ruining that child's life. I felt sick to my stomach as I spent my last $50 on a plan B. After that, I scrapped London entirely. I enrolled in my local community college and ended things with Dallas. By then, my home had gotten noticeably smaller. My parents didn't even have their own room. I wanted so badly to move out for them, but every penny I had was going to Dallas as he lent me money for school before we broke up. Then I lost an old friend. I felt so useless. It was then that I made a TikTok expressing my desire for change, and somehow the video blew up, getting over 1.1 million views. People wanted to help me, and I raised roughly $12,000 to put towards building a tiny home. When Dallas found out, he immediately came to collect and I was forced to pay him back with the tiny house fund. Soon after, he left town. I didn't account for how it would affect my brother. You see, Dallas and my brother had grown quite close over the years arguably closer than my brother and I. How could I tell him the truth? I was so ashamed for what I had let happen. It felt like it was my fault, and it still does. So I never said a word, and to this day, he still doesn't know my side of the story. Truthfully, I'm afraid of how he'll react. He will either feel utterly betrayed knowing someone he looked up to hurt his sister in that way, or he will end up blaming me too. Building a house proved to be difficult for an 18-year-old girl with no experience whatsoever. I had hoped my family would help me, but what I had done was shameful and embarrassing for the family, so I was on my own, really. In these past years, I've only managed to buy the trailer and sketch up a design, but I'm working on it. And I'll keep working on it until it's done. For the most part, 2021 was quiet. After having worked at Osco Pharmacy for two years, I got a new job working for Walgreens with my best friend. I was getting better pay, more hours, things were looking up for me, Remember that trip to Spain that I lost during my senior year? Well, after being postponed many, many times, I was finally able to go July 2021. It was a trip through a company called ACIS. They were very accommodating despite COVID making things difficult. They're a great company and I still use them to this day. The only person I knew was my friend that I had invited. The rest of the group were strangers. The first night in Spain, some of us decided to get drinks while others were too jet-lagged. My friend being one of them stayed back while I went out and made friends with the others. That's when I met Bird. Bird was different than Dallas, in every way. He was kind and sweet and a real gentleman. He and I became friends right away. We talked and walked together to almost every location. We got along pretty well. The second night we spent in Barcelona, I happened to drink too much at dinner. He noticed right away, walked me down to the bathrooms, waited outside while I vomited, and then walked me back up. On the way back to the hotel, he kept his arm around me as we walked. He managed to find me some aspirin. And when we got back to the hotel, he handed me off to my roommate. She gave me a sip of water before I passed out of my bed. 
I woke up, 15 minutes had gone by, and a few of the girls and Bird were hanging out in my room. I was feeling better, but I needed some air, so I went out onto the balcony. To my surprise, Bird followed me out there to check on me. We stood by, side by side as we looked up at the night sky, breathing in the cool air. I remember our hands bumped into each other on the rail just before he pulled me into an embrace. We stared at each other hesitantly before sharing a kiss. From then on, Bird and I became very close. When we got home from Europe, we immediately made plans to see each other again. And for that week, everything was perfect. While in Spain, I felt a sort of freedom in which I was at peace, and it urged me to not return to school when I got back. But Bird did return to school, in a different state. Although he was a time zone away, we kept in contact. Bird had thought we had something special, and I did too. The first night we FaceTimed, he told me he could still smell my perfume. I smiled. He made me feel safe and cared for in a way Dallas never could. That night, he made a promise to me that he would never forget me. During our time together, my mother fell ill. She was diagnosed with stage four just cancer. She's doing better now. Um, she's been on chemotherapy for the past year. Um, Bird was there for me through it all. The week of her first surgery, he called me three nights in a row just to check up on me, to keep me company since I wasn't sleeping anyway. We'd FaceTime for hours on end, sometimes even falling asleep on the phone. And on the rare occasion he was home, we'd pick up right where we left off. More time went on, and while we kept in contact, we seemed to be growing apart. Or at least he was. I was in love. But I was broken. My depression and anxiety had worsened so badly that I had begun needing treatment for it. I tried to break things off with Bird many times for both our sakes. I was worried I had asked him too much, leaned on him too far, burdened him. But I couldn't stay away. He understood me, and I felt as if I could tell him anything. And I did. I told him everything. All the secrets I share with you now, I once shared with him. He was the first to know. But I fear it was my secrets that drove him away. Perhaps once he learned the truth about how I hated myself, he could no longer care for me either. He pulled farther and farther away until he was finally out of reach. Bird and I are strangers now. I miss him. It was during this time that I turned to alcohol for comfort. I started going to bars to drink and dance my problems away. Luckily, I never became an alcoholic, but that doesn't mean I didn't get into a whole lot of trouble. If it weren't for my grandparents, I don't know where I'd be. I'm very grateful that my loved ones and dearest friends have supported me despite my shameful actions. Around this time, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and started treatment and therapy for this as well. Over these last few years, the weight has become heavier and heavier. My depression, anxiety, and now bipolar have taken a toll on me physically, mentally, and financially, which brings us to the present year, 2022. It's my brother's senior year, and I have to admit, it terrifies me. Because this time next year, he'll be leaving for college. He's all grown up now, and he doesn't need me to take care of him anymore. He needs a sister, not a mom. But leaving home is what starts our individual lives. It's one of the reasons I stayed. Because once it starts, it will never just be my mama, papa, brother, and I all in this house ever again. We aren't meant to be together forever, and that saddens me. That one day we'll be separated by towns, states, maybe even oceans. I know it's silly, but I can't help but feel this way. I have been so blessed in life, and yet it can still be so cruel. I find that I don't know who I am anymore, or who I want to be. I feel like a failure, because the person I am today 
is nowhere near the perfect daughter. Now, I'm not telling you this because I want your pity. I'm telling you this in hopes that it brings comfort to you to know that you're not alone. I know what it's like to feel alone. The other reason I'm doing this is because I want to start documenting little parts of my life. Perhaps it will help me find who I am, and I feel this video is a good start to that. I don't plan on showing this to my loved ones. I'd rather they stay oblivious to my heartaches. For now, anyway. It'll be our secret. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed. That's my life so far, and I hope you'll join me for the rest of it.